Brooke and Jubal's second date update. The guy on the phone for today's second date update is going through a problem that a lot of people go through after a first date. You can't really tell if somebody's blowing you off, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially you go out with a girl and they're so mysterious all the time. You know, you can't really tell. And I read his email and it said after their date, she texted him and said, don't ever talk to me again and blocked him on social media. So I'm just not sure what she was hinting at with that. Do you, oh my God. I can't tell. Graham, I'm so sorry she's being so mysterious with you. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I'm really hoping I can count on you guys for oh, some help man. here. Oh, man, yeah. Us crazy ladies. I can't <laughs> tell. Wow, never clear with what we yeah, want. Just can't tell what yeah. she means by don't ever talk to me and then blocking you on social media. You'll never what? understand so, Yeah, just say what you mean. Say how you feel, you know? <laughs> I can never tell with these girls. Okay, yeah. you guys, joke's over. I know. No more joking. It's starting to make me angry. <laughs> All right, so why we know definitely we... she doesn't want to see you again. Uh, yeah. Then why <laughs> okay. are we calling her? She made it very clear she doesn't want to talk to you. Well, I like this girl, and I thought I had a genuine connection with this person. And you were obviously wrong. <laughs> well, it's confusing because there's a lot more to the story. Okay, how did you meet her, first of all? So I was commuting to work on the train. Mm -hmm. a daily thing that I do, and I see this beautiful girl just standing like five feet away from me, and I got that feeling. You know the feeling when you just feel like you know somebody? Whoa. So I'm like trying to figure out where I know this girl from, mm -hmm. and then... You're like the train. Then, I yeah. know her from the train. <laughs> she commutes she, every day, She's too. standing five feet next to me. That's how I recognize her. You know, her. it's just one of those, like, gut <laughs> feelings. And then I remembered that I saw her, like, 15 years ago at church. What? Dang, good memory. For real? Yeah. We used to go to church together. Oh, okay. Oh. And I didn't have a crush on this girl back then, but I knew her. So cut to this moment in the train, and this girl is very good looking like she's blossomed Ooh. oh it sounded creepy the way it you did, said that it did. she's just okay. grown did into that sound uh, creepy? yeah it did i didn't mean it to sound creepy <laughs> you are all grown up it sounded like you were the old yeah. pastor from the church <laughs> talking you. about oh, the young no. girl that had grown up god is good isn't he he has bestowed some gifts upon you all right sorry go ahead <laughs> So I mustered up some courage and I went and talked to her and I asked her how she was and we ended up reconnecting. Yeah. Awesome. So it turns out that she works like two blocks away from me. We talked for the next several stops and I asked her to lunch. Okay. And she said, sure. And it was kind of a little hurried because we were trying to get off the train. And so the next day we went to lunch Perfect. and on the date, she starts asking some pretty general questions, like first date questions. So it dawned on me that she doesn't remember who I was. Wait, you hadn't brought up like, hey, I remember you from church. You hadn't brought that up? She knew I was from church, but she didn't remember who I was exactly. Okay. okay. And so anyway, it didn't really matter because the date was going really, really well, which felt good. And then, so I asked her if we could hang out and make plans for the weekend. Okay. And she was like, yeah, sure, of course, that'd be great. Because it was going, like, we were having a good time. It didn't, again, it didn't matter that she didn't remember me, because I felt like there was something that we could build on. Yeah, right. and if, if you go from lunch to weekend plans, I mean, obviously she was into it. Exactly. And so next day rolls along, and again, this is like where the train literally hit me, because she <laughs> sends me a text. And in the text message, she says, and I quote, I just remembered who you are. Don't text me again. Whoa. Damn. Don't That's come up to me on the train. Don't communicate with me. Whoa. And then she proceeded to block me because I responded and never heard back from her again on text. And I had done a little reconnaissance on social media. I couldn't pull up her page. I couldn't find her. She even blocked all of your stuff there, too. She straight up blocked me wow what did you do yeah, yeah what do you think you did i was thinking about that and i was like i don't know what could i have done to her when i was like 12 years old <laughs> i've been like racking my brain like thinking what did i do what did i do and i can't come up with anything hmm. i i'm just i'm really confused and you don't remember mm. any sort of awkward interaction with her ever none never none so you have no idea what she is accusing you of doing to her back when you guys were in church as a kid. That sounds creepy, it really too. Does. But anyway, <laughs> you have no idea what she's saying you did. Correct. 
And she remembers. It must have been something bad. At first, I thought you were some weird stalker, but I could see where you'd want to find out what that is. Maybe she's remembering the wrong person. Were you kind of a jerk when you were younger? No. Like, any chance you could have, like, I don't know, bullied her or Bible shamed her? Like, you know, (laughs) I hear that's a thing. If you don't know a Bible verse, man, people will just shame you. (laughs) You don't know Genesis? Loser. Yeah. Did you you Bible shame her? Is that what you did? Never. Okay. Huh. Anything you guys can do to help me out, to like give me some clarity here, because I'm a really nice guy and I was a really nice kid. Right. And like I, I'm just, I'm really confused. All right. Well, we'll play a song and then come back and call her and get your second date update. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Hang on. Moving ninety-two point five. Brooke and Jubal in the mornings. Second date update. If you're just tuning in to today's second date update, Graham is on the phone and he wants to call a girl named Grace. They actually knew each other when they were younger. They used to go to church together and he saw her on the train the other day, went up and talked to her. They ended up going out to eat lunch and made plans to go out again. But before they could actually go out again, she texted him and said that she never wanted to talk to him again because she remembered who he was. And then she blocked his phone number, she blocked him on social media, blocked him everywhere. And Graham has no idea what he did when he was 12 years old that is causing Grace to not want to talk to him at all today. Graham, I think I figured it out for you. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, because I I grew up in the church, right? Like, old ladies would always get mad at me for wearing a hat in church. Mm -hmm. Then I'd say, oh, take off your hat, and it would get really annoying. So to get him back, I would plant drugs on them and then call the police, and then they would be escorted (laughs) out of church. So I'm thinking you planted drugs on an old lady oh. to get her kicked out of church, and that was her grandma. That must be it. That has That's to be. God, why are you even calling us? Now we figured it out. We don't need to call her yeah. anymore, Graham. I feel comfortable saying that the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Of. Okay. I, it is ridiculous, but I do feel like you must have done something to someone in her circle of people. Because if she didn't remember you initially, it's not something that you must have done to her. It must have been oh. something she's like, oh, my God, that's the guy that did something to my sister or whatever. That sounded bad, but you know what I mean. <laughs> this could be on national TV at some point, 48 Hours Mystery, but I need you, I need you guys to help me out here. Okay. Well, I'm going to dial her phone number right now and see if we can figure it out, okay? Fair enough. All right, here we go. Hello? Hi, can I speak to Grace, please? Speaking. Hey, Grace, how are you? This is Jubal from the radio show Brooke and Jubal in the Morning. What? Brooke and Jubal in the Morning. It's a radio show. Um, okay. That you sound how can I help you? super familiar with. Um, <laughs> I'm calling you today because we actually got an email about you from one of our listeners. You did? Yeah. Well, because we do a segment on our show, it's called The Second Date Update. And so you went out with a dude and he has no idea what he did, but apparently you don't want to see him again. Are you talking about Graham? Yes, Mm -hmm. I am talking about Graham. Okay. Okay. (laughs) He told us that you, obviously, like Jubal said, you don't want to talk to him at all anymore. Like, we understand that. No, I really don't. Yeah. But the question is why? Because Graham only had nice things to say about you. He said that you guys knew each other when you were kids at church, but he doesn't remember ever doing anything wrong. Oh, really? That's what he told you? Yes. Yes. Like, he was honestly perplexed. Like, he has zero idea what... Like, he even thinks that maybe you're confusing him with another person or something. No, I'm definitely not confusing him with another person. So do you mind telling us what he did, more specifically, so we can tell him what he did? Because he's super confused. Wow, what a jerk. He's really denying that he did anything wrong. We asked him a few times, and he even asked if he was, like, a bully or something when he was back... I think he was, like, 12 years old. And he Uh said no. He said he couldn't think of anything. He said no to that? Yeah. Yeah. Was he mean to you when you were little and he just doesn't remember? He basically ruined my life. Whoa. Wow. That's pretty dramatic. (laughs) You know what? It's more like traumatic. Like, I'm traumatized. Oh, my God. What happened? So uh, we're in choir. Uh Uh-huh. And we're singing our hymns. And I was given a solo. And I delivered it. And I hit the note. And it was beautiful. And it rang through the church, and then it was punctuated by the loudest fart I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> the loudest fart? Really? Oh. Was that? Everybody was laughing. You're laughing at me too. It's funny. I'm not laughing at you. You farted during your solo? <laughs> no, not me, Graham. 
Oh, they, oh think, they think you farted. So he farted loudly. And everybody started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> but why would that ruin your life? Because it was so embarrassing that I had to quit the choir. Like, I couldn't sing anymore with anybody. Oh. And I used to love to sing. All I can remember is looking down in the pews and Graham sitting there laughing his face off while he was ruining my life. <laughs> You sound, like, still really upset about this fart. Like, you can't find humor in it, what, 15 years later? Yeah. I'm an accountant now. I don't find humor in anything. <laughs> At least wow. you're honest about that. I think he did it on purpose. Really? You think Honestly. He and his friends were all laughing about it like it was planned. Like he meant really? to do it. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And you obviously have never forgiven him for that. No, and he never even apologized. I don't think mm. he even remembers that that happened. Well, he wouldn't, would he? You don't always remember when you ruin somebody's life. <laughs> That's true. That's what they say. Yeah, people have told me that all the time. I'm like, oh, I have no idea. <laughs> That's really sad. <laughs> well, Grace, I hesitate to tell you this because I think it's going to make you angry, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Graham is actually on the other line listening and wants to talk to you. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, Graham! Do are you not laughing, laugh. Graham? What are Graham? you doing, oh, dude? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Graham. Hi, Grace. Hi, Grace. Why are you calling me? Oh. I'm calling you because we had a good time. I'm sorry that I'm laughing now. First and foremost, <laughs> that was not me. I did not do that. That was my buddy Augie. He was sitting right next to me, and I completely forgot about all of that. But I'm, I'm remembering it now. So you remember the fart? It was not Augie. It was you. It, <laughs> no, it was Augie. I swear to you, he that you know what? could. It doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't no, even matter. I, but see, it Grace, doesn't matter because thing. you were laughing then at my pain, and you're laughing now at it. So why <laughs> would I want to go out enough. with somebody? who is just going to make fun of me for the rest fair, of my life. Fair enough. Like, I get it. When you're a kid, it's easy to get traumatized about stuff like this. And everyone was laughing. It was an impressive part, but he did it. <laughs> Augie was, he was impressive with that. Like, I don't know how he did it. Like, he could drop a fart whenever, however, all the time. Whoa, that's just the way that he cool. did business. That's the way he did business. He could change the pitch. He could change the timbre. He could change the intensity. He had the right part for every moment. Oh, wow. my God. Graham, I do not think you're helping the situation right now, buddy. And all I want to do is know Augie. I just want to meet Augie now. I keep in touch with Augie, and he's an awesome guy. I mean, he's had his fair share of troubles, but... He's a good guy. and I, look. He's a good kids, guy? Did you not hear what I just said? He completely embarrassed me on purpose. Grace, you cannot hold stuff against me or anybody when we were 12. Maybe you can't, but for me, it was really traumatic. And I don't want to go out with somebody that treats people that way. Grace, can I just ask you a question? When did, first of all, when did you figure this out? Because when I met you on the train, I got the feeling that you didn't re really remember who I was. Honestly, I didn't remember you until I got home and I started looking through my photos and then I saw you and it all just came flooding back. And it's, okay, well, and it's like I've had to deal with this all over again. I had forgotten okay. about it. But if you went home after our date and you were looking at photos of me, there must have been a reason for that, right? Like you, we got along really well. We had a good time on the date. And all of this stuff when we were 12 years old, aside we had a great day and i would Aww. really like to have another shot with you you're not any different now than you were I'm then 12 years old grace 12 yeah when you're 12 years old it's hard not to get caught up in the thrill of a fart you yeah. know i didn't get caught up in the thrill of it i know grace i know that that still hurts you but maybe i mean maybe this will bring some sort of closure to all of it like for you to realize that they didn't do it to hurt you they were just being immature boys. Now, that doesn't mean it's excusable, but maybe you can, like, find some forgiveness and closure. Sure, I forgive them, but I'm not going to forget it. Well, would you like to go on a second date with Grandma? We'll pay for it. No. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> you really? I get it. You're not willing to get to know Graham now. You're going to stick with 12-year-old Graham. He'll be forever young in my mind. Oh, man. You did. I will say, Graham, you did come out of that laughing right off the top. Like maybe that wasn't the best move. I know. 
I know, I know, but as soon as you, as soon as you say fart, it's funny. I still laugh at farts. Farts are funny. It's everybody farts. Totally. Jubal, you fart, right? Uh, no, never. Yeah. <laughs> never done it. Don't know what you're talking about. I'm with Grace on this one. I came to you for help. Well, thank you for your time, Grace. Sorry for what happened to you in church. I hope and you get Graham, back. sorry you didn't get a second date, man. That stinks. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. It's awkward now. Yeah. This would be the perfect time <laughs> for Augie to show up with a really <laughs> perfect fart. Like, can you call him? Brooke and Jubal in the morning. Move at 92.5.